Hello everyone, Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities. I trust you had another restful weekend uh, and get in store for yet another exciting week in global financial markets and Australian markets uh, because everything is not well, everything is not normal and that creates volatility and that creates opportunity. Hi traders and thanks for watching. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank our incredible viewers for tuning into our channel. We would greatly appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button as we're pushing for the 10,000 subscriber mark by the end of the year. Now back to the video. So I'm very excited. I mean, we've seen, I, I think my last video to you was last Wednesday and I said, watch out for a bit of a bounce on Friday. We certainly saw that in the US market. And I continue to think that that is a bounce that will be short lived. Asia is really having a struggle uh, to maintain any upward momentum. I think really we are looking at a bear trend. Now that doesn't mean we might have some updates. The Fed's favorite PCE uh, deflator index coming out on Friday and markets will try and wait and see on that piece of data, but really does it matter? Because even if it is an improvement, the Fed is unlikely to change or move away from its very strong tightening bias. Now, whether there is another Fed rate hike this year or not is debatable. It's quite possible there won't be another Fed rate hike, but the point is there's not going to be any cuts. I tend to think there will be another interest rate hike because I still think the oil price will be going higher and there is a lag time from the oil price moving through transport, then into manufacturing and services. So the inflation impact of the oil price rise so far seen has yet to occur. So the full impact is still coming and that's why inflation could continue to accelerate and that could definitely tip the Federal Reserve's hand toward raising rates. Now, some people are saying the US economy will be too weak. And of course, we were the first to telegraph that the US economy would be indeed unraveling at about this time. Uh, and it most certainly is. Um, but that won't stop the Fed from hiking rates because the Fed actually wants to slow the economy. And people sometimes forget that aspect of this whole scenario. They want to raise rates to slow the economy. So a slowing economy can, in a bizarre way, actually encourage them. Um, so we're not going to see any rate cuts to save the economy. We may see rate hikes and any further rate hikes from now on just steepen the recession impact that the US is already very likely to experience. Now, in terms of the US economy's state of affairs at the moment, we had some interesting data out on Friday. We saw the services PMI, this is the S&P 500 global survey that occurs for each nation's economy. Uh, and for the United States, that PMI data for the whole private sector was just 50.1. It was 50.2 the month before. And of course, as you will all know, above 50 is expansion, below 50 is contraction. So the economy isn't growing. The private sector for the last two data points has not grown at all. Uh, and it's, this is after a very serious slowdown. Services did slightly better at 50.2, but manufacturing was still in contraction. I think it was 48.9, which is a little bit better but it's still manufacturing contracting. And you'll know that recently I was saying that it's nice to see some stabilization in the manufacturing industry, but it still is in a contracted, at a contracted low level of activity. Uh, and this data totally confirms that viewpoint. So the US economy is not healthy. Uh, and this means that even even the, the Fed jawboning rates higher, as it is at the moment, is enough to continue to scare investors. It is enough to continue to make people scratch their heads and wonder how deep a recession the US might in fact be about to have. Because as the Federal Reserve holds rates high, the private sector is actually going to continue to increase.
the long end, increase interest rate margins as a hedge against this greater economic uncertainty. All of this higher interest rates is, of course, supportive of the US dollar. And whilst the euro and the Australian dollar have been doing some good consolidation over the last several days, they still remain at risk for two different scenarios, really. The euro for the ongoing energy crisis that they're likely to experience through their winter, uh, the recession that Germany is in, the contraction that Italy is in. And by the way, the HCOB PMI for the European Union came out on Friday uh, and that showed contraction. So not a good look for the European economy either. So the euro will be weak and then the US dollar can strengthen from the high yields even though its economy is weakening. So that's why I'm bearish euro US dollar. The Australian dollar story is really about, I think, all that is good about the commodity cycle and demand from China and growing demand from the world. Well, there was growing demand from the world. All of that has been priced into the Australian dollar, and that's why it's now under pressure. And I think particularly US hedge funds are a little bit worried about the Australian dollar's future in an environment uh, where the Chinese economy is slowing, Chinese exports are slumping, Chinese manufacturing is in recession. That's not a good look for Australian commodity demand. And also combined then with the domestic situation of Australia heading into recession is not a good sort of one plus one. It's sort of a minus one plus a minus five. So <laughs> it doesn't look good for the Australian dollar, but it's about global growth slowing. The euro is very much under pressure due to an energy crisis this winter again. Uh, and the US dollar can be buoyed by these ever higher interest rates and yield returns and by even just the stability of the Federal Reserve holding rates higher for longer. And don't forget, if corporations shift their cash into cash accounts with the big New York banks, uh, then they've got a 100% government guarantee on those cash deposits. And you can't get that anywhere else in the world. So all of these factors come together to continue to support the US dollar. Sorry, I remain bearish the euro, euro against the US dollar. I'm bearish the Australian dollar against the US dollar as well. Uh, stocks this week, I think, look precipitous at the edge of a bit of a cliff. Uh, and I think I see stocks really stumbling at the start of the week, but then falling again as the week progresses. So not a favorable outlook for the equity market, but a very favorable outlook for our personal trading and investment strategies, because there could be very good moves here uh, that offer significant opportunity. Thank you very much. Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities.